Last year, Axios had a pretty successful Kickstarter launch with their Pathfinder Field Watch, getting fully funded in a matter of minutes and reaching almost eight times their original goal. If you haven't seen it before, check it out. It's a great field watch that seems to straddle the line between dressy and casual, making it a pretty interesting and, more importantly, an affordable alternative to a Hamilton Khaki King or a Seiko Albinist. Well, this year the Singaporean microbrand is back, and they're hoping to repeat that same success. Except this time, they're taking the dressy up a notch. This is their latest release, the Tribune, due to launch in Kickstarter sometime in May. And for this one, Axios wanted to do something a little bit different than their previous tool watches. So for the Tribune, they combined a sector style dial with a very sleek, classically sized 38 mm case. Now, before we jump into this one, I need to point out that this watch is a prototype that was lent into the channel. And as such, all your standard prototype warnings apply. And the promotional tag was up because Axios also mentioned that if the campaign is successful, they'd send me one later on. Now, that said, let's get into it. For the Tribune, you're looking at a slimmer 38mm wide case with a corresponding shorter lug to lug of just under 46 making it practically perfect for those slender wrist collectors out there, as well as those that appreciate a smaller classically sized piece. It's also fairly thin at 10.2 millimeters, which is fairly remarkable when you consider that also includes a box sapphire crystal, which rises beautifully out of that case. However, this slim profile does come with a price, even when it's paired with a thinner Miyota 9015 movement, as the Tribune here only comes with 50 meters of water resistance firmly placing this as more of a dress watch than a sports. The case is simply fantastic, and it's actually my favorite part of the watch. It has an all brushed finish that is complete with a wide circular brushed bezel. The only exception to that is this polished edge that sits on the outside of the twisted lugs, which really draws attention to that feature, as well as highlights the overall sleek and, dare I say, sexy nature of the case. And in a lot of ways, I think this is done in the same spirit as a smaller 38mm Omega Aquaterra. But here that case is combined with a nice box crystal, as well as a sector dial underneath it, giving it more of a vintage 40s Art Deco dress watch vibe than, say, the sleek modern sports watch of the Aquaterra. To the right, we have a modest sized crown, which is fairly easy to get a grip on and use. It's not a screwed down crown, but it is signed with their logo a logo that is then surrounded with this mirror polished surface, which I have to admit is really eye catching when you see it, and it really helps that logo stand out. But when you compare this to the rest of the case design, I think it feels off a little bit, and maybe stands out too much. On the rear, we have a custom screw down closed case back. It's nicely done, but it honestly doesn't feel like anything special. And in some ways it does feel like maybe there's something missing right in the middle of that design. Now on the wrist, the Tribune is extremely comfortable. If you're someone that really likes smaller watches, I think this is gonna be perfect. The fairly lightweight nature of the watch combined with the smaller platform makes this something that just melts into your wrist. And the aggressive curvature of the lugs brings the spring bars down just a little bit, and that doesn't hurt either. It's also simply a gorgeous watch to look at. In particular, this salmon dial is especially eye-catching. But if you're looking for something that isn't quite as attention grabbing, I think some of the other colorways will be toned down a bit. The basic dial design is that of a sector style dial, which does seem to be a growing trend these days. Although Axios has put their own spin on it, creating a very visually interesting and engaging design from the various layers, depths, and textures used within. The base of the dial looks to be the same as that in the Salmon Pathfinder with this matte textured rose gold or copper material, which here has two reflective metallic rings then placed on top, both of which have text printed in black, as well as this mini moat separating the two. One of which is this thin ring at the outer edge, creating a detailed chapter ring, and the other is the center ring containing the hour indices. For dress watch fans, I think this design is gonna be a bit divisive. Some are gonna love it and some are gonna hate it. But if you're someone that does prefer a more detail-driven dress watch, like myself, this is right up your alley. And personally, I think it's just striking to look at. I always appreciate a good functional design, and here you get that ability while still looking good. But there are a few things that do feel a little off, at least with this particular colorway. 
On this version of the Tribune, Axios has decided to use a set of blued hands. And other than them being rather short, they look great. Just like the dial. But while I like each aspect individually, I'm still not convinced blue hands go with a salmon color dial. The color contrast helps them come through clearly, but it also seems like it clashes. And depending on your perspective, there may be a little bit of a disconnect between the subtleness of the font, the slimmer hands, and the wider bezel, which I think will really come down to whether or not you prefer the focus to be on the dial or the case. But overall, I think here there's a decent balance. The other thing is with the Axios name on the dial. Now, in previous watches, Axios has always used their Star Trek looking logo, like on this Pathfinder. And as a big sci-fi geek, that's something I've always liked about the brand. I know it's not supposed to look like a communicator, but I can't help but see that when I look at it. But here they left off the logo and just used a simple brand name on the dial. Now, considering the vintage 40s style theming, the brand name may be more fitting than the logo. Although I have to see kind of a mock-up to be certain. But for me, the problem isn't so much the name on the dial as that they left the logo on the crown. And having both on the same watch does create a little bit of a branding mismatch, just between the various elements as well as their previous models. Now as for the strap, that's kind of a whole other story. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed the Zello's branding on the buckle, which at first glance may seem a little bit odd, but Axios is sort of a sister brand to Zellos, and I guess their particular straps weren't ready, so they just used one of the old Zellos ones. The production version should ship with something similar, but that one should have the Axios branding. This strap is pretty similar to what Zellos shipped with their Nova. It's overall a good quality strap made with good Horween leather, and it's done in a classic style which matches what Axios is trying to go for. However, it's not quite a perfect match. I think when you take a step back and look at the entire package, the strap seems a little bit overpowering to the watch. As compared to the sleek case design, this seems a little big and a little wide. Now, among watch collectors, I think 20mm straps would be preferred. But from an aesthetic standpoint, I think 18 might have been a better choice here. Or if you really want to keep that 20mm lug width, have a more aggressive taper to the strap matched with a more slimmer buckle. Now, for the movement, Axios has decided to use a Miyota 9015. Personally, I'm a big fan of that movement, and I think it's a perfect choice here. It's a nice upgrade over your standard beat Seiko NH35A, yet still costs less than Swiss alternatives. It's also a fairly thin movement, and that's something Axios took full advantage of here. The only real drawback of the 9015 is that the rotor noise can be a little louder. It's never something that's bugged me, but I do know some find it bothersome. Overall, for the Tribune, it's a great choice. Assuming, of course, that the price will be kept reasonable. And that does bring up a very important point. And that's that right now, as of filming this, I'm not sure what these are going to be going for. I'm not sure if they've actually settled on an early bird pricing structure, as nothing's been listed in their communications. When I find out what the price is, I'll leave a comment down below. But as of right now, as long as they keep it relatively reasonable, like say in the $400 to $500 range, I think it'll do really well. As overall, it's a well-made and gorgeous piece. There are a few things I'd like to see changed, but nothing here I'd say is a deal killer. As far as the design goes, it's going to be a bit subjective. If you're someone that prefers more of a classic clean-cut design, there's not much here for you. But if you like things with a bit more complexity and depth, as well as a ton of symmetry, the Tribune has all of that in spades. The slim and sleek case paired with the box crystal and vintage inspired dial create a comfortable timepiece that clearly stands out in a sea of microbrand divers. I like divers as much as anyone, but it's always nice to see a microbrand willing to try something a bit different. Anyway, that's my take on the Axios Tribune. As always, let me know yours down below as well as what are your thoughts on some other sector style watches. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time. See you next time.